Welcome. My name is Marcus Wesaw, and today I'm going to be doing a training on asbestos awareness. The purpose of this particular video presentation is to promote awareness of the many dangers of asbestos, as well as to provide a general outline of the OSHA requirements. Specifically, what I'd like to do is introduce the permissible exposure limit of asbestos as well as the excursion limit of asbestos and a few other related requirements. As always, my information to contact me is listed right there on your screen. So if you want to shoot me an email or call me about your asbestos questions or anything in this presentation, feel free to do so. Introduction. Asbestos is a naturally occurring mineral fiber. It was used in numerous building materials and vehicle products for its strength and ability to resist heat and corrosion before its dangerous health effects were discovered. Individual asbestos fibers cannot be seen by the naked eye, which puts workers at an increased risk. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA, has regulations to protect workers from the hazards of asbestos. What is the hazard? Asbestos fibers are released into the air during activities that disturb asbestos containing materials. The asbestos fibers can then be inhaled without knowing and trapped in the lungs. If swallowed, they can become embedded into the digestive tract as well. Asbestos is a known human carcinogen and can cause chronic lung disease as well as lung and other cancers. Symptoms and or cancer may take many years to develop following exposure. Where is the hazard? The hazard may occur during manufacturing of asbestos containing products, performing brake or clutch repairs, renovating or demolishing buildings or ships, or clean up from those activities. Contact with deteriorating asbestos-containing materials and during cleanup after natural disasters. Some materials are presumed to contain asbestos if installed prior to 1981. Examples of these materials, as well as other presumed asbestos-containing materials are Thermal system insulation, roofing and siding shingles, vinyl floor tiles, plaster, cement, putties, and caulk, ceiling tiles and spray on coatings, industrial pipe wrapping or pipe lagging, heat resistant textiles, automobile brake linings, and clutch pads. So, now let's talk a little bit about the three industries with OSHA standards on asbestos. They are the general industry, shipyards, and construction OSHA standards. OSHA has three standards to protect workers from the hazards of asbestos, depending on the type of workplace. For complete information on all of these requirements, reference the standard that's listed on your screen for each particular industry. I'm going to briefly go over each one of these three so you have a basic idea of the OSHA standards and then obviously if you'd like to learn more about these standards just go to your favorite search engine I love Google so I use Google but use whatever you'd like and just type in 1910.1001 for general industry as one example now general industry 49 CFR 1910.1001 covers work in general industry, such as exposure during brake and clutch repair, maintenance work, and manufacture of asbestos-containing products. Shipyards 29 CFR 1915.1001 covers construction, alteration, repair, maintenance, renovation, and demolition of structures containing asbestos during work in shipyards. Finally, construction. 29 CFR 1926.1101 covers construction, alteration, repair, maintenance, or renovation, and demolition 
of structures containing asbestos. What's the permissible exposure limit, or PEL? Permissible exposure limit, or PEL, for asbestos is 0.1 fiber per cubic centimeter of air as an 8-hour time-weighted average, and we abbreviate time-weighted average with TWA. With an, excur uh, with an excursion limit of 1.0 asbestos fibers per cubic centimeter over a 30-minute period, the employer must ensure that no one is exposed above these limits. Assessment. Assessment of workplaces covered by the standards must be completed to determine if asbestos is present and if the work will generate airborne fibers by a specific method under each standard. Monitoring. Monitoring necessary to detect if asbestos exposure is at or above the PEL or EL, and again, that's permissible exposure limit or excursion limit for workers who are or may be expected to be exposed to asbestos. Frequency depends on work classification and exposure. The construction and shipyard standards require assessment and monitoring by a competent person. If the exposure has the potential to be above the PEL or EL, employers must use proper engineering controls and work practices to the extent feasible to keep it at or below the PEL and EL. Where feasible, Engineering controls and work practices do not ensure worker protection at the exposure limits. Employers must reduce the exposures to the lowest level achievable and then supplement with proper respiratory protection to meet the PEL requirements. The construction and shipyard standards contain specific control methods depending on work classification, and the general industry standard has specific controls for brake and clutch repair work. Hazard communication. Proper hazard communication and demarcation with warning signs containing specified language in areas that have exposures above PEL or EL is necessary. No smoking, eating, or drinking should occur in these areas, and proper PPE or personal protective equipment must be provided and used to prevent exposure. Decontamination or decon as it is commonly abbreviated in lunch areas. Separate decontamination in lunch areas with proper hygiene practices must be provided to workers exposed above the PEL to avoid contamination. Training. Training requirements depend on the workplace exposure and classification. Training must be provided to all workers exposed at or above the PEL before work begins and yearly thereafter. All training must be conducted in a manner and language in which the worker is able to understand. Workers who perform housekeeping operations in buildings with presumed asbestos-containing materials but not at the PEL must also be provided asbestos awareness training. Medical surveillance. Medical surveillance requirements are different depending on the industry. Medical surveillance must be provided for workers who engage in certain classifications of work or experience exposures at or above the PEL in construction and shipyards. In general industry, Medical examinations must be provided for workers who experience exposure at or above the PEL. Record keeping. Records must be kept on exposure monitoring for asbestos for at least 30 years, and worker medical surveillance records retained for the duration of employment plus 30 years. Training records must be kept for at least one year beyond the last date of employment. Again, my name is Marcus Wiesel, and I've been your facilitator for this asbestos awareness video presentation. If you have more questions or comments, 
please feel free to call me or email me as my contact information is listed on the screen. I hope that you have enjoyed this asbestos awareness video presentation and thank you very much.